Have you ever seen an artist painting or drawing and thought to yourself, oh, I wish I could draw like them. I'm just not talented like them. Well, there may be a solution to this, and it may be more promising than you think. Roll the, roll the titles. Roll the titles. <laughs> So before we begin, I'll be very grateful if you could subscribe to my channel and make sure you click on the notification bell so that you get alerts of my new videos that I upload. And in doing so, you help me produce more videos for you to learn how to paint and draw photorealistic artwork. And tell your friends. So the age old question, is art a talent or a skill? And unlike some other questions, this one actually kind of does have an answer. It's a little bit of both. Um, some people are born with a propensity to learn the skills, develop the skills a lot faster than others, and um, some people have to work a lot harder in order to develop the skills, but if they do so in practice, and we'll come to the practicing, good practice a little bit later, um, they can master it um, without uh, an, an innate talent or uh, an apparent talent from when they were born. Um, nobody is actually born with the ability to draw well. The people who are seen to have a talent, um, they have a few little advantages such as um, encouragement as a child to draw, um, the access to materials. Um, I, for example, was encouraged to draw as a child. Um, sometimes I, I drew when I shouldn't have, like uh, on the wall in my uh, parents' bedroom, um, to their discovery. <laughs> on drawing the curtains, they found a little woolly mammoth uh, being hunted by some cavemen. It's, it's these people who are encouraged, who are seen to have better ability, that continue to pursue their expression. And they're the ones who, who develop their art, their artistic skills. If you don't, if you don't uh, develop them, how do you expect them to improve? It's like uh, if you picked up a violin and you learnt it as a child and you could play a few scales, maybe happy birthday or something or a few tunes and then put it down for 30 years, how do you expect to be able to be any good at it? It's exactly the same as that, basically. And you know, you can't, you can only get so far um, with talent, but um, determination can get you to mastery. So those of you who'd like to learn to paint and draw, but don't think you have that natural born ability to um, be able to learn quickly, um, quicker than others, I'll tell you the secret. And basically the secret is to follow tutorials like uh, some of mine, for example. And using what you learn from those tutorials, you basically adapt that knowledge and newfound skill into your own work. Um, you find a new reference image and then start using my techniques and methods to create your own artwork in the same manner. But you're, in that way you're, you're expanding your skills and your knowledge. Now, before I mentioned that we're going to be talking about practice, so what is good effective practice when it comes to art or or anything, to be honest. Um, and practice basically is uh, when you, you you repeat you repeat a process again and again in order to create what we call muscle memory. And what's happening here is. Um, you produce, uh, every time you, you repeat um, a process, um, you produce uh, something called myelin, which um, 
is kind of like a casing around your neural pathways which link your muscles to your brain um, which sends signals to your muscles back and to your brain you know, backwards and forwards um, and this myelin uh, casing prevents any leakage of that information so it's still good information the more you do it the more myelin you produce the better the signal that's pretty much what what uh, what we call muscle memory um, now it's not it's not really the number of hours there's uh, there's that theory isn't it you do 10,000 hours and you you've learned it whatever but the, that's n there isn't really much evidence for that at the moment it's not really the number of hours it's more like the the quality and the effectiveness of your practice um, that really counts and so the effective practice is basically consistent um, intensely focused and um, it targets the weaknesses that lie at the edge of your current ability so for example if you relate it to um, fitness for example um, say you start doing 20 press-ups a day um, your limit your current level of um, ability is 20 press-ups a day and you can't do any more then the next day or few days you get to add a couple more onto that and that's the same as uh, building this myelin you're building on your abilities there um, and that is effective practice and it'll be a similar way uh, with your artistic skills so you're, you're practicing doing the same sort of techniques following my tutorials for example but if you do it with your photo reference so you're not actually copying my photograph verbatim as it were um, you'll be adapting and stretching your abilities to the best of your current abilities and you'll be ex extending your your skill levels I hope that makes sense so what have we learned so far well we've learned that talent exists but we can kind of call it advantaged in that people are born with a talent uh, slightly advantaged in learning um, and developing their artistic skills a little quicker than those who haven't. Um, we've also learned that talent or no artistic skills have to be learned by all. You're not born with the knowledge and skills of being artistic. Uh, we've also learned that not all tal talented artists are made equal. So some artists are better at certain disciplines than others. We've also learned that talent is limited but with determination and effective practice, progress will be made by all. Supposing I know all this now, I don't need to be talented in order to create art. Why can't I create art? What do I need to do? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to boil it down to the bare bones. So we need to analyse exactly what are we trying to do? What are we trying to achieve here? We're trying to create art but first of all we have to understand what is art I don't mean conceptually I mean physically so to me art is the transferring of a material it could be graphite charcoal paint to a surface paper canvas etc or board um, in order to represent objects in the real world so why do I ask that well Essentially, if you can make marks, you can create art. And how does that relate to photorealism? Well, photorealism is, is about creating the right marks in the right places according to your photo reference. So, essentially, what we have to do to create photorealism is we have to learn how to make the right marks in the right places, how to recognise that they're in the right places. If they're in the wrong places, we have to recognise how to correct them. A lot of these things we're not really taught at school. <laughs> Learning from others is a shortcut. So say we intend to draw this orange, for example, and we put down some marks, say a bunch of straight lines. If we were to put them down like this, it doesn't look like an orange. And this is where the concept of abstract art comes in. But if we were to arrange these lines in a different way, 
we're getting closer. And once we refine those lines even further still, we get even closer to what represents an orange. So the intention is just to replicate the real object as close as we can. I'm often asked by my students of why they can't really draw when they could as a teenager, say. And I answer them with another analogy of learning to draw is similar to riding a bicycle. You have to learn how to do it. You can't just ride on two wheels straight off the bat because you'll just fall over. So first of all, you start on a tricycle, then you upgrade as your skills progress to training wheels. Um, then eventually you get the training wheels taken off and you have a few short runs of trying to keep your balance and eventually suddenly you've got it. And, and that's similar to what it is with art. But if you never learn those skills, how do you expect to ride a bike successfully without falling over? Most people stop art when they leave school and so those skills aren't nurtured. So when they want to draw as an adult, they still possess the skills they had when they left school. But don't despair, you can learn these skills and pick up where you left off. You can learn to ride a bike as an adult. A lot of adults can't swim, for example. And the whole purpose of my channel is to fill that learning gap with you. So if you follow along with the video tutorials and learn from the information videos, you'll be well in your way to becoming that artist you never knew you were. So if you want a little evidence of um, art being a skill that you can learn, here are some some images from my students' work, um, from my one-day workshops. A lot of my students uh, actually said to me that they hadn't picked up any art materials since leaving school. And you know, that would have been over 10 plus 20 years ago uh, for some of them. Um, and you can see that they are producing some pretty, pretty effective results. Um, they're by no means perfect, but they are pretty close. And with some effective practice, they can get better and better, as can you. So please tell your friends and family and uh, share it on social media, and especially to those people that you might know that who've always wanted to paint or draw but never really thought they could or saw the opportunity, um, point them in my direction and uh, I'll be interested to help out. So next week we're going to get stuck right in with the practicals. We're going to be starting using charcoals. Um, you might want to look in the description below. There are links to the materials I'm going to be using so you might want to stock up on those um, so you're ready to follow along with these steps. In the meanwhile, have a look at some of my videos, check out my website, have a, uh, follow my Instagram, and tell all your friends, please. Thank you. See ya.